the story for today. The story for today ends this way. I'll just end this. This is how it ends. It says, Jesus says to this lady, go and sin no more. And if we only, if we only know that without knowing the bigger picture, we're, we're, it's going to be all confused. We're not going to get to the point of what Jesus was saying. You know, we might say, oh, the main person is this woman. Or the main person is the crowd or this religious leaders. And not zeroing on God's amazing grace. And His amazing grace for this woman and for us. So today, stay focused on God's grace. That's the, that's the main part that we want to stay on. So the rest of it, let me, let me read this story for today. It comes out of John chapter 8. Um, and, and this is part of our series. That every, for over the last couple of years, uh, the Bible says the word go. Jesus says go. And, and for the, there's, every so often I'll say, I, I need to preach on this one. Jesus says go and sin no more. Uh, we, we've said go into all the world. Um, this is one for today. Go, the go of surrender. Jesus returned to the Mount of Olives. But early the next morning, he, he was back again at the temple. The crowd soon gathered and he sat down and taught them. As he was speaking, the teachers of the religious law and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in the act of adultery. They put her in front of the crowd. Teacher, they said to Jesus, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. The law of Moses says to stone her. What do you say? They were trying to trap him into saying something that they could use against him. But Jesus stooped down and wrote in the dust with his finger. Let me just pause there. Can you just imagine this nightmare? Just, it, it's a nightmare. It's a, a total nightmare. You know, it's, it's, maybe it's just a bad dream. And any second I'll just wake up. But no, this woman is laying down, fully exposed in front of a crowd of people. There is public shame going on here. And I, and I know that we, not many of us have been in that situation, but can you imagine this nightmare? Everyone knew that what she had done. Even more, everybody knew the punishment that was earned. Well, you know what? She's a sinful woman. She deserves the punishment. Just get on with it so we can get on with our day. And she lay in front of this crowd in front of Jesus, this teacher. And her, <laughs> they, they interrupted Jesus' classroom to throw this lady in front and say, well, what are you going to do about it? And the troubling part for us is, this is like modern day politics for us, isn't it? It's, it's like, they don't, these people don't care about this woman. It, it, she's just a pawn so that we can get at the gotcha moment for somebody else. And we can say, oh, you're totally wrong and dis, discredit for you. It's a trap. And, and, and because we know some parts of history, we know that if, if Jesus says to this, these people, you know what, she's, a, she's a guilty, and by the law, you should go kill her. Okay, just go kill her. Um, Jesus is going to get brought before the Romans, and he, they're going to say, wait a minute, you have no right to punish somebody to death. That's what the Romans do. We punish people to death. Well, you can't do that, and now you're in trouble. But if Jesus goes the other route and says, you know, nothing to see here. You know, this, you know whatever you uh, see here, no, no, no. It's, it's not really as bad as you think it is. Uh, no big deal. Just move along. These are people that honestly want to live for God. They're, they're sitting, in, sitting at the feet of the teacher saying, hey, teach us about our God. What does he expect of us? Because we want to know, and, and that's a serious thing. It's, it's one of the Ten Commandments. Hey, don't do this. 
This lady is, boom, she's done this. You can't just say, no, there's no big deal here. And Jesus is going to lose all credibility with people who actually want to follow after God. So that's your trap, and we know this. But do we know this story personally? Do we, do we know this story? This lady's got a super messy situation, and we, we've got messy lives. Our lives are just a mess. You know, imagine this. Imagine someone followed you around all day with their, their cell phone and then just uploaded everything you did on TikTok or, you know, Chappy Snappy or whatever they do nowadays. You know, they, everything went up. Everything you did. Every second. The, the world could see just how messy our lives are. They can see those situations of, all right, do I, do I like cut this person off when I'm driving or yelling at them? Or, oh, no, sorry, that was a person from my church. Oh, how you doing? You know, God bless you, all right? And then however it is, well, they would see every screen shot on your computer. They can see every text you send. They can see every second of every day. Our lives are just as messy as this girl's. And, and usually we, 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 go, we would go one of two directions. This is just our human nature. And for the most part, we just minimize our sin. We, we just say, all right, come on. You know, our culture doesn't really understand this. So we, we just go that route. This is no big deal. You know, and there, these are not really sins in our culture. Uh, you know, the, the body counts, they're not, they're not taken seriously. You know, the, being with somebody who is not your spouse is not taken seriously. This would, this would be yesterday's news in our world. See, we, we don't really have shame over that anymore. You know, but, but this could be just a, a, an isolated thing. How many other things in our world do we just say, you know, that's not really a big deal. There's no shame in that. You know, we, compared to some of the other people, you know, this is not a big deal. And we minimize it. And we take our sin and we just say, you know, it's not really that much. You know, everybody's doing it. You know, it, Many years ago, before I found a home here in, in, in Muskegon, I would come up and I would, I would paint uh, my friend's house. He lived in, in Grand Rapids. And, and, and it seemed like every time I went up and I helped paint his house, I got stopped by the cops. Because I was speeding, of course, because in my early 20s I didn't know how to you know, not press the pedal down as far as it could go. So it, it was my second time up here, uh, and the first time I got my, my ticket, and I'm driving along, I'm right on 196, coming into Grand Rapids, and then he stops me again. And I'm not very happy about it. I'm going, uh, the, the tough part was, he was so nice. How can you get angry with a police officer who's nice? He was polite, but it, so I, I ask him, I go, in my nicest way possible, Come on, everybody out here is, I'm staying with traffic. We're all going 80, but, but we're, I'm stuck with traffic. How, why pull me over? And he said, I've been out here for a half hour. I could have pulled over everybody. They are all speeding just like you. And he just said, you're, you're guilty. You're speeding. Everybody else is guilty too. Don't minimize what you've done because you did this. And I didn't like it, but I just had to go, okay, I was speeding. I take the consequences. But we do that with our sin. We compare it with other people. We minimize it. We, we just say, oh, we brush it aside. No, we rationalize it. But in a big sense, uh, we just try to make it small before God. God, no, nothing to see here. 
consequence. And sometimes we go the other direction with it. When, when we, we, we say, oh, this is nothing, God, nothing to see. But then we go so far in the other direction as we inflate it. We inflate it so huge. This is the part that's tough for us. Especially when we know, when we know Jesus. I, I notice my sins more now than I did when I didn't know Him. Because I know what He expects of me. I know what's right and what's wrong. And I still do it. The wrong part. I still do it. And, and sometimes yeah, I, I internalize it so deep as it, God, what am I doing? I know better. It's like I'm, I'm not even paying attention to what you're saying. I, I, I sing the words, God, I, I need you. And then I go out and I, it's like, what? I don't need you. I can do my own way. And, and God, do you still love a broken, messy person like me? And we go to the, these extremes of, of, God, there's nothing there. Everybody's doing it to, God, I am so worthless. Did you even love me anymore? Because I am not worth that. You know, this is, this, Jesus sees this woman in the middle of her spiritual reality or for what it is. That she is... She doesn't know Jesus. That she is, she is just a person in deep mess. Just like us. Hopefully you see that. that this, this is an extreme situation that we don't, we don't deal with nowadays, but we're all messy people. And the best part of this morning is that Jesus meets us right in our mess. Jesus is right here. He's, I see you. I know you're right here. You're a mess. You can try to minimize it, but everybody knows it's here. It's a big deal. You, you can try to inflate it that nobody would ever love you because you are such a mess, but I'm here with you. Because Jesus meets all of us in the middle of our messes. In, in able, how we grab a hold of our Jesus is to surrender to God's grace. It, 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 it does no good to, to minimize or to, to, to inflate our sins until we surrender to God's grace. Well, let, me, let me read this to the rest of the story. Because this woman sees God's amazing grace and just says, ah, this is where I want to be. Let me read it to you. Starting in verse 7. We're picking up there. The, these people, they kept demanding an answer. So Jesus stood up again and said, All right. But let the one who has never sinned throw that first stone. And then he stooped down and again and he wrote in the dust. Then the accusers heard this. They slipped away one by one beginning with the oldest, until only Jesus was left in the middle of the crowd with the woman. Then Jesus stood up and again and said to the woman, where are your accusers? Didn't even one of them condemn you? No, Lord, she said. And Jesus says, neither do I. Go and sin no more. And, and hopefully you heard it. You, you heard it, right? That was, that was the sound of grace swallowing up her guilt. Oh, she was guilty. And God, God's grace just swallowed that up. Said, it's not there anymore. I'm taking care of that. And, and Jesus just brings God's grace to her. But the... Was there anything that this girl did to deserve God's grace? No. See, that's the great thing about grace. Grace is getting something you don't deserve. And we are all this lady. 
They're just messy. There's nothing in us that, that deserves God's love. He says, you know what? I am going to just shower my grace on you. I am going to take care of your sin problem. And it doesn't matter if you think you're innocent. It doesn't matter if you think that the, this punishment is undue. It doesn't matter if you think the law is dumb. God says you're guilty. But I'm going to take care of your guilt. I'm going to take care of this. And God's grace puts a huge umbrella of not guilty on this girl. A huge umbrella of not guilty. Woman, where are your accusers? Didn't even one of them stay and accuse you? No. Neither do I. Go sin no more. Because this is what God's grace does. God's grace renews the broken relationships. Especially and in, in primarily the one with Almighty God. It, it, takes, it takes this broken relationship that we've had with God. It says, We're, I'm going to fix that. Through the work of Jesus, that relationship comes together as it was supposed to be. And this woman who was broken... Jesus says, I don't condemn you because I'm paying for that sin. And all the ones that you've done in the past, and all the ones that you will do in the future, I'm going to cover those. What I want you to do now is to live within this relationship, this renewed relationship. I want you to go in this new relationship with God and sin no more. Leave this life of sin. Because it's been paid for. It's been paid for. I've paid for it. Let's go on. Jesus challenges her. And says the, the, the go doesn't mean that I'm, she's not guilty. It doesn't mean that, that she's going to have to pay for this because it's done. It means that she and her God are in a relationship again. See, see the tough part for us is the idea of surrendering to God's grace. And to say, okay, I'm not finding my way out of my mess on my own. I need to surrender to it. And in case you're wondering, surrender is a military term. You guys knew this, right? Surrender is a military term. It refers to, to ceasing all re resistance and submitting to the authority. It's submitting, you're, you're fighting against them and saying, okay, you're in charge. You know, it was back in, in, in 1945, in, in the end of World War II, Europe was done. Hitler was gone. The, the Nazis had been taken care of. But then there was the war in the Pacific. And by 1945, all of the, the islands were, were liberated and, and, and the Japanese army was pushed all the way back to the islands of Japan. And there was negotiations going on to say, all right, you've got to surrender. The, the war is over. And there was the argument on, I'm not sure we're going to surrender here. You're going to have to take us all. And, the, and this was the reality. Those that, that were alive back then understand that there was a tough thing. There was going to be over a million American men die to liberate uh, Japan and say the war is over. But within Japan, there was six to ten million people, men, women, and children who were going to take up arms and say, you will not take us alive. We will not surrender. There will be absolutely no submitting to your authority. There was no surrender. And what happened was there was uh, debated by many, many people off and on, but there was two bombs that said that you need to completely surrender. And this is a picture on the battleship, the, uh, I believe it's the Missouri, uh, in Tokyo Bay, where it was the absolute surrender. As in, no, 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 you're not just going to be in charge of your military, you're not going to be in charge of this area. Absolute surrender to somebody else who's going to take care of things now. Have we done that 
with our lives, our spiritual lives. So to say, God, I, I, I'm a mess. I am totally wrecked here. I need 100% absolute surrender to your grace so that I can go and live in that relationship with you. I, I need to totally surrender. Any way to it's thinking that I know better than you, that I, that I can do it on my own, that I, I can unmess myself. I need to completely surrender. You know, this, this story brings up such, such emotions out of people, like, and we focus on the shame or we focus on the, the injustice of it. That where's this guy? He was at fault as well. And, we, and those are side issues. The huge point for this is the 100% surrender to our God. And to say, I need Jesus more than I need air in my lungs. I need Jesus. I, I, I have such great guilt, but your grace is so much greater. And I need to Surrender to your grace in my life. So I can live with such great gratitude. Is this you? Are, are you a mess? Have you, have you surrendered to God's grace in your life? To say, I need Jesus. And now I need to live in this relationship with God. And sin no more. I need to leave this life of sin. My hope is that you will totally and unconditionally surrender to God's amazing grace who covers all of our sins and allows us to live in relationship with Him that we might go with Him. This woman found everything she ever needed in God's grace. My hope is that today, if you, if you don't know anything about God's grace, that today is the day you know it. That it covers a multitude of sins. Everyone. God's amazing grace. Pray with me. God, in the middle of today, of all days, we hear your voice calling to us to Surrender to your grace. And some of us know Jesus and, we, and we've, we know that you have paid for our sins and we have been covered by your grace. Yet we forget that it, it takes us into everyday life as well. That we live in your grace all the time. That we may go and sin no more. God, we ask your blessing on us as we prepare to leave that we might leave with your grace. God, we ask your blessing on us as we seek to live lives worthy of our calling in you. We ask your blessing on us as we uh, live today for you. Amen.